ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Marvelous and Majestic World of Painting. It truly warms my heart like a lovely home-cooked meal in the microwave that you could join me yet again. So, let's get painting. 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 Let's get painting today. Let's get painting. Ladies and gentlemen, laid before your very eyes is a 16 by 20 standard canvas. So, in the past we've done quite a few wet on wet paintings, but for today we're going to do more of a, a traditional painting. We're going to do a black bear of sorts. He'll be quite a unique black bear. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll just wait and uh, let you see the end of the episode. You'll see the final product. You're gonna say, ha ha, hearty ha ha. <laughs> okay. Now that I'm done acting like a complete and utter goofball, let's grab our number two pencils and start sketching our bear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you once again to narration mode. Okay, so as you can see, we're drawing the head, now a couple of ears, of our bear. Isn't it lovely? Okay, oh, whoa, whoa, let's skip ahead. Oh, there's my googly eyes. Oh, 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 how scary. Okay, anyway, so now we've jumped ahead to the gun. It's a six-shooter from the Old West. Used for hunting down desperados. Sheriff Black Bear doesn't hold back in his pursuit of justice. A long barrel is what we got here. Okay, just erasing the other side of the arm so that the barrel of the gun is in the foreground. Okay, so now moving on to our gun belt. Going around the bear, because it's around his waist, of course. And I'm just now stating the obvious, so I have nothing else better to say, other than we are just still in the bear's early beginnings of creating a wondrous painting such as this. Oh, sorry, I fell asleep there. So, we're drawing the holster. That's all done. As you can see, we have now have a complete sketch of our bear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're expecting a black bear dressed as a sheriff. Because that's what he is. Sheriff Black Bear is what I call him, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got our main bear of the painting finished. So now I want to go to the background and sketch out a little cute little baby bear. Uh, I've decided I'm going to give him some cowboy boots. He needs some cowboy boots. So let's see. Start about right here. There we have it, a pair of boots from the Wild West. Okay, now we can start sketching our baby bear. Let's do that now. And done. We now have our baby bear sketched out, so let's move on to our background. All right, so I think this bear might be protecting this little bear cub in the forest, so uh, we're gonna do some background trees and we're going to have the ground come to an end 
I think way back here, about about this point right here. And we're going to do some background trees. All right, so let's do something a little bit unusual that we have not yet done on the show before. So we're going to go into some black gesso. So here we go. We're going to put it into this bowl here. That's enough. All right. When you're doing this method with the gesso, make sure you are keeping the form of a tree or bush so it's not just some glob up there. And don't get an overloaded amount of this gesso on the brush. Certain areas you can, maybe the base you have a little bit more, but try and keep it a little bit lighter when you get up to the top. If I get a little bit too much on the brush, I'll kind of knock a little bit off on the bowl and then come back to it. There's just the right amount on there. This will make such a neat effect when we put our transparent color on. You will just have to wait and see. But I can tell you, you're in for a real treat, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, so you've applied your black gesso. Good job. I'm very proud of you. So now we're going to let that dry completely. Come back and we'll start applying some colors of our wondrous sky. We are, we are, we are, we are. <gasps> you know what that sound is, ladies and gentlemen? It's time for an emergency snack break. We are, we are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have at least 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 emergency snack breaks per day. But this is no ordinary snack break, ladies and gentlemen. This is the snack break that is the king of snack breaks. We're talking cookies and milk. Cookies and milk. Cookies and milk. Milk and cookies. Milk and cookies. You dunk the cookie in the milk. You take the cookie out of the milk. Cookies and milk. Cookies and milk, milk and cookies, milk and cookies. After the cookie is nice and soaked, you take a big bite or shove it in your mouth all at once. Cookies and milk, cookies and milk, milk and cookies, milk and cookies. After the cookie is in your mouth, chew it very good and then stick your pinky out for another sip of milk. Cookies and milk, cookies and milk. Milk and cookies, milk and cookies. Oh my, this dancing is terrible. Who is that hooligan? That's just terrible. Oh wait, that's me! Oh well, let's continue. Cookies and milk, cookies and milk, milk and... Oh, we're going faster now. Cookies and milk, cookies and milk, milk and cookies, milk and cookies, cookies and milk, cookies and milk, milk and cookies, milk and cookies, cookies and milk, cookies and milk, milk and cookies, milk and cookies, cookies and milk, cookies and milk. Okay, we're done. That's it. Oh, where were we? Oh, yes. Now let's go into some liquid clear. And we're going to do this background area full of our clear. So we'll get that covered real fast. All right, so we've applied our lovely liquid clear. I'm going to take a one inch brush and go into a little bit of phthalo blue. I'm going to dull it down a little bit with some white. Not too much of a dark blue. Or a light, light blue. I think that looks quite lovely, marvelous, majestic, and any other synonym of the word beautiful. All right, let's come thither to our canvas. And just come like that. And 
we want that black to show through. We did add a little bit of white to our blue. It's going to be a little bit more opaque, but we'll get most of the paint off of the brush by doing these strokes to the top here. And then when we come down, there won't be as much paint on the brush, so we'll be able to apply our paint and still have this brush, the tree brush, <laughs> show through. And we'll go ahead and apply that, and we shall return shortly, ladies and gentlemen, after these messages. All right, we got the basics in, and we'll just go ahead and grab a fan dangle flat brush, and take a grab a little bit of that paint there, and we'll go around our detail work here and just fill in these areas very carefully. So now we got all of our detail work done. We're going to grab just a little bit of titanium white on our one-inch brush. Same old brush with the blue on it. That's okay. And I want to brighten this pathway up. Make it look like there's light illuminating through the trees. like that. It'll make a little more sense once we have all of our other brush applied. All of our trees, brush, bushes. It'll look even better. I may come back over that maybe do a little bit more, but let's just get out our basic brush strokes now. Clean that up pretty good. Alright, let's move on to our next step. Alright, so let's get a dark green shadow color for our forest. We'll start off with some sap green, a little bit of Prussian blue, some black, and Van Dyke brown, all mixed together. There we are, just like so, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm just going to grab a fan dangle fan brush and load a pretty good amount of paint onto this brush and uh, we're going to come right up here and we'll make this tree stand out a little bit more back here kind of try and apply this kind of lightly It's got the perfect amount of green in that, just uh, just enough. Nothing too crazy. And come to this side too. I want to make this sort of like a pathway. I want to make a little trail coming through here. Brush. And then just taking the corner of the brush and doing this. Be careful not to get your paint in the detailed character here. Ah, I think that's looking mighty fine. fine. 
I'm just going to apply the same color to some of these other trees in the background. And another method of doing some mighty fine bushes is take this uh, round brush and just lightly tap some of that color onto the very end of the bristles. And start from the bottom because that's going to have the most shadow. And work your way up. Do one at a time. This gives us a little bit of a green color shine through, which makes it look absolutely mwah, marvelous and majestic. Just like that. We still have plenty of lovely blue shining through. the same thing over here. All right, our trees are completed. Now, let's finish the rest of this landscape part. We're going to cover this with some liquid clear all throughout here. And then we'll begin to work on some trees. But we'll just cover this real quick. And we'll get going with that. All right, so we're just going to grab a fan dangle two inch brush again. You know what? I keep saying fan dangle. That's like the word of the day or something. So we're going to grab that fan dangle two inch brush and we're going to go into some raw umber. Oh, I'm sorry. I pronounced that wrong. Raw umber. That's how I like to pronounce raw umber. I mean, raw umber. There we go. Okay, so we're going to create a base. You know, like a ground color, I guess. About right there. It's going to fill in this whole area here. Just this block all this in with this raw, raw umber. I keep wanting to pronounce it wrong. Raw umber. Remember that. Not raw umber. It's raw umber. There you go. Now you got it. All right. So we're going to fill this in, and we'll be back. I present to you a base color for our land. Now, let's grab a fan dangle fan brush once again and mix some paint. All right, so we're gonna go into some Van Dyke Brown. Let me grab some white, some Van Dyke Brown. We'll have it be, what we're doing is the path. I didn't explain this. So I wanna have it be kind of light, just further back and then It'll gradually get darker as we get forward. Alright, so our starting point is going to be right here where we have our tree gap. And I'm going to come all right here and we want to start very small. Let me add some more white to that. This raw uh, umber is kind of a similar color. I'm going to have the pathway about right over here. It's going to kind of curve along. I'm going to start to get larger and larger. Start to come on to the other side here. A little more Van Dyke Brown in that. Let me 
careful not to go into our drawing here just yet. Uh, I'm gonna get some. I'll do uh, some detail work right around it with the smaller brush. is larger in size. I'm kind of just doing a motion like this. There we are. And I'm going to make sure your path is getting wider and wider as you come further down the canvas. I'm going to do a slight highlight color in the background. I'm going to keep this fairly dark and add just a touch of Indian yellow and cad yellow. I don't want to be, I don't want to have this be too light. There we go. All right, let's come thither like so. Highlight the tops of these. Do one at a time. brightest part of our highlights I'd like to be through this little pathway. venture off over into this area of the tree. Just do one little section at a time. Little individual branches and leaves. All right, let's start off by mixing ourselves a grass color. I'm gonna take a little bit of liquid white so I can get the paint to stick well to the canvas and to lighten it up just a little bit. And we're gonna grab some of our uh, sap green. A little bit of the cad yellow. Touch of Indian yellow. And a touch of yellow ochre. And for the far away grass, we want to we want to have this color light. Let's start applying our glorious green grass, shall we? I think I'll start about right back yonder. Here. And we can leave some of this brown color in here. I want to keep this realistic looking, so we'd like to have some of that dark brown color. A little sap green. Perhaps darken it just a touch. Open like that. There we go. Make sure we keep our pathway in view. Now 
as we come forward, our grass needs to get a little bit darker. There you go, you got it. I have no idea what you're doing at home while you're following along with me. And you're probably not even following along with me. But I trust you're doing good if you are painting this. Grass is a little thinner right there. I don't know. It can be any which way we want it. Now, keep your eyes peeled how I'm doing this here grass. I keep a little bit of the, the dark brown exposed. And I do the next plane of grass a little bit darker than the last. Gives us the illusion that there is depth and distance in our painting, ladies and gentlemen. I just, I had to give you the wink. Uh, wouldn't be right if I didn't. All right. Now that we've applied our paint fertilizer, we can see that our painting is coming together by each nanosecond that passes. So now, let's work on some trees, shall we? Let's take a straight dive into some of that there raw umber. This is a number eight flat brush. I'm just going to block in a color here. And Try and shape this so it doesn't look like he's climbing up a telephone pole. This is just a basic shape that I drew out. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe put some little, a little bit of shape into this. shape some edges. Maybe it kind of jets out, goes back in. Now it's looking a little more like a tree. And I'll just finish blocking this in real quick. All right, I was just finishing up the base of our tree with a filbert brush. And I think now is the time to add some branches. Alright, same color. Yeah, I think I'm going to have this little bear here. Uh, same little branch. And I think I want that branch to start about right there. Come on out and go through his hat. That looks good. Um, come out the other side. And we have a lovely tree branch. All right. And we'll do a few more here. And we'll have one come up yonder and leave the canvas. So now I filled in another tree, and now I'm doing some detail work with the script liner brush. I'm dipping it into some paint thinner, and then I roll it like this to fill the brush full of paint. And it's quite simple, actually, to do some of this detail work. You just use the wobbly method. You can have a shaky hand while doing this. Gives it a realistic appearance, ladies and gentlemen. Just something like that. There we are. Looking mighty beautiful. 
Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You now have the shape and form of your trees. Now, let's create some highlight colors, shall we? Okay, our bark color is quite simple. So, we'll just grab some titanium white, some Van Dyke brown, and have this color marbled, shall we? There we go. And don't overmix that color. All right, so I got a roll of paint on the knife. We'll use a brush to do some detail highlights, but we're going to mainly focus on the trunk here. So we're going to just take this and lightly, gently graze the edge here. See how that paint breaks? That is exactly what we want. There we are. A little more paint on your little brush. Not brush, uh, palette knife. There we go. Just like that. Okay, we're going to do the same over here. Not only can you use your brush for this little detail work, you can use the small edge of the knife. Just like that. Just lightly raise a little bit. Just like that. Alright, so now our background is starting to come together finished up the trees. We got our bark look to them now. And I'm just going to clean up the base of our trees. I've basically taken the uh, same green color for our grass but added a touch of black to it. So we'll just go ahead and come along here. And it should give us a little bit of a shadow effect and make it look like some grass is overlapping the roots. Perhaps not enough black, but we can just grab a touch more. And it puts a shadow, an instant shadow, right under our tree. Okay, so we finished our shadows in our trees, and I'm going to grab a one inch brush, and I'm going to start working on some bushes in the foreground here. We're going to go into that same exact shadow color that we made for the background. After we do this, we're going to add in some lovely, marvelous, majestic flowers. So it will start about right here. like that. So we got a bush back here. Get some more of this here paint. And I'm going to come right here and knock in one more. to knock it off is just scrape it that way with your brush. Have it overlap just a slight bit. And I'll come over here and do one more. Just loading a lot of paint on the old brush -a -rooney. And I think we'll have 
Just a smaller one over here. I want to do the trick over here. All right, let's do some highlights on those now. Now for some lovely highlights, ladies and gentlemen. All right, what do we have here in this mess? Okay, we got some set green, cad yellow, Indian yellow, some yellow ochre. That's about the color I'm going for right there. Perfect. All right, let's. Uh, do the tops of these here. I'm going to want this to be darker near the bottom. Make sure we don't destroy all of our shadow we made. That's just about enough there. And it's okay if we don't put you know, too bright of highlights on these because I want the lovely flowers to really stand out on this painting. Okay, we'll come over here and do this one. darker as we come near the bottom here. Perfect. All right, start doing some flowers. Okay, so we're going to create our stems first. I've just taken some sap green and some liquid white, just mixed them together, created sort of a yellow green, and that's all we're going to need. And we'll do our stems right now. Now that we have our paint loaded on our brush, let's go ahead and perhaps make about a bushel of a bushel or two of our stems. Uh, I think I'll start right here. All right, ta-da, they're all in. So now let's go ahead and mix us a color for our flowers, shall we? All right, so for our flowers, I think we'll grab some titanium white and some alizarin crimson, and we'll make a beautiful pink color. And that is about the pink we're looking for, a nice bright pink color. Thin this a little bit. We will grab some liquid white. There you are. I think we have our color, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and you can just come any old way up here and just do some sort of design just to indicate flowers. Something like that. And then you can put some small ones, you know, randomly in the background behind the stems. And that will create the illusion of thousands upon billions upon trillions upon zillions of flowers. Grab some more of the old paint there. Very nice, very nice, indeed. And I'm just kind of dabbing some paint in the background. Some of these areas. And that's all it takes. All right, now we have our lovely flowers placed in our bushes. And it's time to do the fun part of this painting. We shall work on our bears. And I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I'm going to leave these trees without any leaves. I kind of look. I kind of like the effect it has on the painting, so let's go ahead and just 
block in uh, the black color for our black bears and then we'll start adding detail after that. Okay, so we got our basic bear color established. I know it looks a little weird right now, but that will help us to obtain the fur-like appearance for our bear. Before we do our fur, I'm going to go ahead and work on the old hat. So let's mix up a color for that, shall we? Okay, for the hat, I think I'm just going to go into a little bit of Van Dyke brown and titanium white. And we'll just, you know, mix these colors back and forth, see what color we like best. And I think something like that would work good. I changed my mind. How about some burnt sienna with it? Just a touch. Yeah, something like that. I like that. I like that. That's beautiful. We'll go with that one. Here goes nothing for this crazy looking critter. Okay. So here we are. One hat. We will just block this color in right here. And I would say at the base of the hat we want it to be a little bit darker. We'll, we'll darken it up after we block this basic color in. But uh, that will cast a shadow right around where it's sitting on top of his old head. Alright, and I'll just fill this in and we'll return shortly after these messages. Doesn't that look divine? Well, I'm going to come back and do the star later. Let's move on to the belt. I think for this old west gun belt, we'll do uh, kind of a reddish color in it. Grab some Van Dyke Brown and some of that burnt sienna. Have a little bit more of that burnt sienna in it than we did for the hat. A little more. Brighten it up some. Something like that. Alrighty, let's see how this color turned out. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Oh, that is marvelous. Oh, that is majestic. Yeehaw, cowboy. Well, everyone, I would like to welcome you to the future. I have gone ahead and worked a little bit more on this and uh, done some fine detail work. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done here. So we filled in his sheriff's star, done his eyes, his nose, his mouth, his cheeks. We've done the gun, a silverish color, silver gray color. Same color with a buckle on his belt. And we've I think I'll brighten up that right boot there, make it a little bit more burnt sienna-ish. And now we've done our little baby bear. So pretty much the main thing we have left to do is the fur. I know they look a little just flat because we just blocked in the basic color of our bear, but we're going to um, do some different colors of fur. Uh, we're going to kind of go back and forth between black, gray, blue, so it'll make our fur really stand out on our bears. And I'll probably piddle around with a couple more little details. Other than that, we'll be, we'll be able to sign it, and you won't have to hear any more from me for a while. Until the next episode. So ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare our task now is to fluffify our teddy bear. Like I said, we're going to go back and forth between some white, black, and blue. And that will make the fur stand out on our black base color. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'll return with more progress in just a moment.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to sign our painting. And as you can see, we've done a lot of fine detail work on this painting, so it's taken quite longer than our classic wet-on-wet -wet paintings that we've seen here on the Marvelous and Majestic World of Painting. So let's go ahead and sign our painting with some liquid white and titanium white mixed together. All right, so we got our two-inch script liner brush mixed with some titanium white and liquid white. And we'll come right about here and sign this lovely little painting. Signing the painting is definitely easier when you are signing it on a dry surface, such as this one. On next week's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we will be doing a painting that is out of this world. Just wait and see what we have in store for you. And let's go ahead and go over this one more time. Give it a second. Now we cross our T. More. Why, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for another edition of the Marvelous and Majestic World of Painting. This painting here is going out to a lovely cabin in the woods, and I hope it hangs there for over 145 years. Uncle Pat, Aunt Christy, my cousins Zach and Marissa, I hope you enjoy this painting, and I hope it will bring a warm and fuzzy feeling to your cabin in the woods. God bless you, everyone. I'll see you next time here on The Marvelous and Majestic World of Pain. Ting! Exclamation point. Thank you. Have a good day.